Last weekend, Deacon Ed mentioned in his homily of how yet to this day, as Christians, we experience persecution and martyrdom. Talked about examples of Christians being crucified, being deported because they believe in Jesus Christ. So this isn't some fairy tale of yesteryear. It's still alive. It's prevalent today. And if you were to ask me, have I ever been martyred for my faith? Well, the answer to that is simply no, because I'm still alive. But I have ever been persecuted. The answer I can say is this. Yes, I have. I'll give you one story. One time a priest and I went to a restaurant. We sat down in a booth. The waitress walked past us once, twice, three times. Never acknowledged us. And for a while I thought, well, maybe it's beyond serving hours. Only to learn it wasn't. And this act by the waitress went on and on and on. She served other people in other booths, but not us. So in the end, you know, we finally said, forget it, we get it. We got up and we walked out. And we talk about it yet to this day, how what it's like to wear a Roman collar. You know, some people just don't like you. They don't like what it is that you stand for. It's a lie. It's well today, persecution in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, with that though, we keep going forward, everyone. We realize in the end, Christ will conquer and he will reign. That's why we undergo these things. So with that in mind, let's take a moment. Let's look at the gospel of today. You know something, everyone? Whenever God asks a question, we better listen because we're going to learn something important. First question I ask of God in the Bible is this. Adam, where are you? Now, Adam, now God knows where Adam is. You know, God is God. But the reason that God asks this question is to help Adam know that where he was. Adam, look at you. You're hiding because you're naked. Because of this, you sin. Now, at one point, Jesus, God, asked two questions. Remember what they were back to back? Who do people say that I am? And the second question is, but who do you say that I am? To the former question, we hear the disciples, Elijah, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. Now, it's interesting, the gospel of today in the 14th chapter of Matthew's gospel. And the other response the disciples give is actually found in the beginning of this chapter. Jesus is doing all these miracles. So Herod the Tetrarch says this, this Jesus is John the Baptist come back to life. That's how he can do all these mighty deeds. Okay, so that's who the disciples say. That's what people are saying about you today, John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. You know what I hear in 2014 people say who Jesus is? This is what I hear. Jesus is a nice guy. We hear this. Jesus would never do anything mean. Me not go to heaven? No, he's a nice guy. Well, read the Bible. And you want to know how many times Jesus says, I'm a nice guy? How many times? It doesn't appear. A great teacher? He doesn't say that. A great prophet? He doesn't, even, he doesn't say that. Who does he claim to be then? Remember the second question. Who do you say that I am? Peter says, you are the Christ, you are the Son of God. And Jesus says, bingo. And so if Jesus isn't the Son of God, then we've been deceived by the greatest liar who ever walked on the face of this earth. So we better come to an understanding of how do we know Jesus is the Son of God. For everyone to do that, we have to turn to the pages of the Gospels. Right? I listened to a CD this past week, and it was an interesting CD because... In the CD, study after study after study says this about Christians. We all believe that we're pretty good Christians. And because of that, all we need is a little tweaking. It's hard to prayer. God tweaked me a little bit. My son or daughter tweaked them a little bit. My husband, my wife tweaked them a little bit. Oh, they need a little bit more than me, so tweak them a little more than me. Tweaking. 
Okay? Tweak them. Here's the problem with that mindset. How do we know we're pretty good Christians? What reference point do you have to say, this is a pretty good Christian? The danger anytime we come up with our own point of reference is this. It can be pretty biased. We could make Adolf Hitler into a pretty good Christian. You know? Pretty biased. And so when we look at that point of reference, and we look at the Gospels, we realize this point of reference is quite simple. It's blown away. Okay? Now we know one of the answers to the question, why God doesn't answer my prayer? This is why. God doesn't want to deal with tweakers. He wants to deal with people who want to be transformed and changed. Okay? Let's look at Mark, Matthew's 14 chapter if you want to realize who Jesus really is and how radical he is. Okay? Remember, 14 chapter, read the Bible. If you want to start, read Matthew 14 this week. Just pick it up, read it. John the Baptist is there. But here's the other stories how radical Jesus is. Last week he fed 5,000 with what? Five loaves and two fish. The gospel after this one, people bring Jesus sick. They don't even ask Jesus to heal them. All they ask to do is go up and touch the tassel of his cloak. Just touch it. And he can heal them. Today's gospel, he walks on water. Peter says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come. He doesn't say, I can't. Or you can't do it, Peter. He says, Peter, come. And he walks on the water. He's, he's radical. He's radical. And Peter goes along pretty well until what happens, everyone? He gets frightened. He gets scared. And there it is, everyone. We get afraid. You see, everyone, there's really a big gap between life and the gospel. And let me just tell you how so looking at today's gospel. Okay. How many of you would ask Jesus, Lord, tell me get out of the boat and walk to you? Now, don't lie. In the story itself, 11 didn't. Do your mathematics. 11 out of 12 did not. One did. Give him courage. Give him some kudos for that. But what happens, everyone? He starts to sink. Okay? So what are we saying here is this. We are much more comfortable with Jesus coming to us than we are getting out of the boat and saying, Jesus, I'm going to come to you. Okay? We're more comfortable here than we are there. But everyone, we realize this is the power of the gospel. It is who Jesus is. Okay? It is our faith. Okay? It's much harder for us to say, I'm going to put it all on the table. Transform my life. Transform my family. Transform my attitude. Transform my faith. Faith. That's radical. It's hard to do. But it is who we are. And if we do it, Jesus will say this, Come and do not fear. This is the most interesting thing I think about this homily today is this. If you actually, depending on the translation of the Bible, if you were to actually look up how many times the phrase, Do not be afraid, is found in the Bible, you want to know the answer? 365 times. That means I could give you a biblical calendar, a scriptural calendar. Okay? Calendar of scripture reading on it. January 1st, do not fear. January 2nd, do not fear. December 30th, do not fear. December 31st, do not fear. People, if we want to change society, the world today, 
We realize we're at striking once again in Iraq. Some of us wonder, what can we do? Don't look at the person next to you. Look at yourself. Listen to what Jesus says. Come. Come to me. Don't be scared. If you can do that, you'll be able to answer the question, who do you say that I am? Peter gave it, but did you hear it? At the end of the gospel today, it says, truly you are God's son. That's who Jesus claimed to be. God's son. Not a great teacher, not a nice guy, not a great prophet. God's son. And he does. Okay? So pray today, everyone. Tweaking isn't what God wants. Get out of the boat. Go to Jesus. Transform your life. Now and until eternal life. Let's do our sign of the cross in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat>